Hey everyone, this is Mostly Casual Commander, where we do our best to keep our games of Commander fun without sacrificing our ability to win. We're just a group of friends trying to have fun playing our favorite game. If you're looking for expert plays or optimized deck lists, you're probably not going to find them here. I'm BK, and today I have a game of Commander for you. J-Man's going to kick us off with Millicent, Restless Revenant, a Azorius Spirit flying deck that's looking to beat down opponents super fast and evasive-like. He has three planes, an island, Cyclonic Rift, Mana Drain, and Swords to Plowshares in his 7-card opening hand. Next up is me, BK. I'm playing Vampire Tribal, which is a Mardu-colored vampire deck featuring Edgar Markov as the commander. I kept a 7-card hand with Luxury Suite, Dragon Skull Summit, Isolated Chapel, a Mountain, Olivia Valderin, Captivating Vampire, and Indulgent Aristocrat in my opening hand. I'm looking to beat down my opponents with a ton of vampires. Next up is Kovex. He has Toxorel the Corrosive as his commander in this Demir colored deck. It's looking to ensure that the board state is controlled by shrinking all of his opponent's creatures. He gets a 7 card hand with Urborg, Tome of Yogmoth, an Island, Rot Tide Gargantua, Honored Heirloom, Commander Sphere, Nullify, and Dark Ritual. And finally we have Kyle, who's using his Demir colored deck, which is Wilhelt the Rock Cleaver. It's a zombie tribal deck with a whole bunch of shenanigans up its sleeves. He kept a 7-card hand with Watery Grave, Swamp, Liliana's Mastery, Grave Pact, Distant Melody, Lord of the Accursed, and Bastion of Remembrance. Here's our seating arrangement for this game, and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Enjoy the game. J-Man starts us off by playing an island as his land for turn, and passing it to BK. I play Luxury Suite, which enters the battlefield untapped, because I have two or more opponents. I follow that up with an Indulgent Aristocrat, and this triggers Edgar, giving me another 1-1 Vampire. After that, I pass to Kovax. He draws and plays Urborg, Tome of Yogmoth, as his land for turn, so now everything's a Swamp too. Watery Grave hits the battlefield for Kyle, it enters tapped. Over to J-Man for turn 2. Another Island hits his battlefield, and he passes to BK. Because Luxury Suite's a Swamp, Isolated Chapel will enter the battlefield untapped. I then use those two lands to cast Cover of Darkness, which grants all of my vampires fear, which will make them harder to block. Then on the combat, I deal two points of damage to J-Man and gain one life for my lifelinker. Over to Kovax, he drops an island as his land for turn. Then he casts Dark Ritual, ramping him three mana, and he uses that to cast Commander Sphere, a mana rock that can be later sacrificed to draw him a card. Over to Kyle's turn, he plays island as his land for turn. Followed by Sky Diamond, entering tapped but can be later used to tap for mana. On to J-Man's turn, he plays Plains, and then he passes it over to BK. I play Dragon Skull Summit as my land for turn, and then this happens. Well, I might just regret this, because I think it's a little bit too early, but we're going on the aggro plan. I'll cast a Captivating Vampire, so as it's cast, I get a 1-1. Uh, so I'll move to Combat. Uh, I have a response to you. Sure. Into combat. Yeah, yeah. What you got? We got a sword. Your captain. Ah, I knew power. it was too early. Son of a gun. So at least you gain two, two life. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. You're more than welcome. <sighs> All right. So then uh, we go to combat at J Man for two. So J Man, just know that I will always remember that. I gain a life, and then I pass it over to Kovax. He draws, and drops a Swamp as his land for turn, followed by Honored Heirloom. Again, another Mono Rock. It could also be used to target and, and exile a creature from a graveyard. Island hits the battlefield for Kyle. Then he taps out to play his commander, Wilhelt the Rock Cleaver. So he passes the turn, and does not sacrifice Wilhelt to himself. J-Man flashes in Rattle Chains on Kyle's end step. And then on to J-Man's turn. He draws, and plays another Plains as his land. And following that, he casts Haunted Library. This is an enchantment that can be used to create 1-1 one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying. On to BK's turn, I drop a mountain as my land for turn. And then I cast Olivia Valderin. This will trigger Edgar Markov, giving me a 1-1. One, one. However, J-Man decides to respond to this by casting Mana Drain on my Olivia Valderin. Of course he does, and thus begins the war between J-Man and BK. I move to combat, yet again swinging at J-Man for his transgressions against me. Dropping him to 33, and I go up to 45. On to Kovax, he plays another island as his land for turn, and has to pass it, unfortunately. Path of Ancestry enters the battlefield for Kyle. Following that, he casts Lord of the Accursed. A zombie lord gets plus one, plus one, or it can activate and give zombies menace. On to J-Man's turn, he has his four colorless floating mana on his first main phase. 
He drops Morlin Haunt as a land for turn, allowing him to get 1-1. One, one. Then he uses that floating mana to cast his commander, Millicent, Restless Revenant. However, Kovax has a response. He casts Nullify, which will counter target creature or aura spell. In this case, it is J-Man's commander, Millicent. Onto BK's turn, I draw and cast Soul Ring, which will allow me to tap for some additional mana. Classic commander staple right there. Then I cast Bloodline Necromancer. This vampire not only gives me a 1-1 when it's cast, but when it ETBs, I could also return a creature from my graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, I target Olivia Valderin, but in response, Kovax activates his Honored Heirloom, and he exiles a target creature from a graveyard, which was Olivia. I then move into my combat step, swinging at J-Man, my sworn enemy. He decides to take the damage, he goes to 29, and I go to 46. Over to Kovax's turn, he plays a Swamp, and then he sadly has to pass it again. Unfortunate we're not seeing his Toxroll deck kind of do some work at this point. Bastion of Remembrance hits the battlefield for Kyle. This gives him a 1-1 and can start draining his opponent's life. So he places his token out onto the battlefield, and then follows that up by casting Fleshbag Marauder. When this ETBs, each player has to sacrifice a creature. So Rattle Chains, a Vampire token, and the human all hit the bin. This has multiple triggers take place. J-Man makes a couple of spirits because creatures his opponent's control died. Uh, Bastion of Remembrance drains everybody except for Kyle. He gains one life, and then he could also scry with Path of Ancestry. He bottoms it. At his end step, he triggers Will Help, uh, sacrificing the Fleshbag Marauder, again triggering Bastion, and getting him a 2-2 Decayed Zombie token. His opponents lose a little bit of life, and he gets to draw a card as well. On to J-Man's turn. He drops another Plains as his land. Then he casts Supreme Phantom, a Spirit Lord, effectively doubling J-Man's power on the battlefield. He then swings into combat at BK and dealing 6 points of damage to me. Onto my turn, I play Sign and Blood, and I target myself, so I draw 2 cards and I lose 2 life, going to 36. Following that, I cast Legion Lieutenant, another Vampire Lord for me. This triggers Edgar Markov, getting me a 1-1, and then I go into the red zone, swinging again at my arch enemy. He doesn't declare any blockers and takes 12 damage. Of note, I did not gain a little bit of life as I should have, which is unfortunate, but not a deal breaker for the game here today. Kovacs played a swamp, and then he casts his commander, Toxroll the Corrosive. He then moves to end step, which gives a slime counter to each creature he does not control. Every other creature is also shrunk by minus one, minus one. However, it doesn't kill any because there's lord effects on everybody's board states. Kyle plays Grave Pact, which will have his opponent sacrifice creatures whenever one of his dies. He then goes to combat with his Decayed Zombie. He deals 2 damage to J-Man. This will break his Decayed Zombie, triggering a bunch of things. So each of Kyle's opponents has to sack a creature. J-Man can make some Spirit Tokens, and Bastion of Remembrance will drain each of Kyle's opponents as well. Then he casts Arcane Signet in main phase 2, giving him a little bit of ramp. Onto his end step, he triggers Will Health and does not sacrifice anything. Onto J-Man's turn, he casts Haunting Imitation, which will make each player reveal their card on the top of their library. If it's a creature, J-Man will get a copy of it. In this case, it's Gifted Aetherborn and Grey Merchant of Asphodel, Gary himself. So he makes a couple copies, and then he gets to drain everybody with Gary seeing not only himself, but also Gifted Aetherborn. So he goes up to 24 life and drains everybody else. He then casts his commander Millicent and moves right into combat with some spirit tokens. He then deals 10 points of damage to BK, and on J-Man's end step, I activate my Indulgent Aristocrat. I sacrifice a Vampire token and each of my vampires gets a plus one plus one counter put on it. Because my creature died, J-Man can activate his haunted library and gets a 1-1 spirit token as well. I place the counters and then on to my turn. I tap and cast Edgar Markov, my commander. He enters the battlefield and I go right into the red zone with the team right at J-Man. This triggers Edgar Markov on the attack, giving plus one plus one counters to each vampire I control. And he decides to block my Legion Lieutenant with his copy of Gifted Aetherborn, and he takes the rest of the damage, dropping him to 3, and I gain life up to 31. Nezahal, Primal Tide, hits the battlefield on Kovax's turn. It's a very dangerous thing that's hard to deal with. You can also draw him cards and allow him to catch back up. Liliana's Mastery is played by Kyle. This triggers Nezahal and draws Kovax a card. It also gives a couple of zombie tokens to Kyle and pumps his team a little bit more as well. He goes to end step, triggering Wilhelt, sacking his 2-2. This has multiple triggers again, draining his opponents, gaining him life. His opponents have to sacrifice a creature. He gets a 2-2 decayed zombie token and draws a card. His engine is running very smoothly. 
Planes hits the battlefield on J-Man's turn, and then he goes right into combat, attacking BK, dropping BK down to 12 life. He also gets two spirits off Millicent. I play a Swamp, and then I play a Vanquisher's Banner, naming Vampire, and I'm sniffing out a possible Cyclonic Rift from J-Man here, so I decide to attack Kovacs and hope that he does not cast it. Kovacs takes the damage, dropping down to 8. He goes to his turn and plays a Swamp as his land for turn. He then plays a Soul Ring, which unfortunately isn't much action. I think Kovacs was hoping for different card draws here. On to Kyle's turn, he plays Ancient Tomb as his land for turn. He taps it and takes two points of damage and casts Empty the Laboratory where X equals three. J-Man sees an opportunity here to not die and casts Cyclonic Rift on Overload, hoping to bounce everything. However, in response, I play Boros Charm and deal four points of damage to J-Man. In response to that, Kovacs cracks his Commander Sphere to draw a card. Boros Charm resolves, knocking J-Man out, which makes his Cyclonic Rift disappear, and then Empty the Laboratory resolves. Kyle will sacrifice three of his zombies, and this will allow him to not only have an insane amount of triggers, but also find three zombies off the top of his library and put them right onto the battlefield. He finds Micaeus the Unhallowed, Ebon Death Draco Lich, as well as Gleaming Overseer, which comes with a zombie army token attached to it. So then Bastion of Remembrance will drain his opponents three times and he'll gain three life. Grave Pact will make his opponent sacrifice three creatures. And then he'll get two, two, two zombies with Decayed from Wilhelt, as well as put his army token onto the battlefield. Then he casts Distant Melody, naming Zombie, and he draws seven whole cards, given the amount of zombie creatures that he controls on the battlefield. So once he draws his full grip, he casts Champion of the Perished using Path of Ancestry, which allows him to get a scry. He decides to bottom that card, then moves to combat with his commander, and this knocks Kovacs out of the game by dealing him five damage. He then moves to his end step, and so many things happen. At the end of the day, I had to sacrifice Edgar and took a little damage while he drew cards and stuff. And the bottom line up front here is that I absolutely regret killing J-Man and not letting his Cyclonic Rift resolve. I didn't really see that playing out in that way, so shame on me. On my turn, I play a Gifted Aetherborn, which really the reason I'm playing it is to try to draw cards off Vanquisher's Banner, uh, looking for an answer to this mess. But I do not find one immediately, so I cast Knight of the Ebon Legion. Looking again for a card, and sadly I find nothing but an Immerstrom Predator. So I try to clog up the battlefield as best as I can in an effort not to die. Onto Kyle's turn, he determines he needs to clear my board state a little bit, so he casts Zombie Apocalypse. This not only returns his Lord of the Accursed to the battlefield, but it also allows him to bring back his Fleshbag Marauder. And when that ETBs, he has to sacrifice a thing. This will trigger Grave Pact as well as other things, but the bottom line is that I'm going to have to start sacrificing my creatures. So Fleshbag Marauder re-enters the battlefield because of Micaeus. So this makes me, of course, sacrifice another creature, as does he, which triggers not only his Grave Pact again, but also his Bastion. Uh, his Champion of the Perished has four instances of trigger on it at this point, and Will Helt also wants to make two Decayed Zombies. Then he casts Go for the Throat on my poor little Gifted Aetherborn. This will kill Gifted Aetherborn and make sure that he has a clear path aside from my Immerstrom Predator. He moves to combat, I block in vain, and still take 50 points of damage, and this makes Kyle the winner. Congratulations Kyle, very well played, very fun zombie deck. So please let us know what you think of this game. Yes, I know I should have let Cyclonic Rift resolve. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.